Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. We are back in the Alfa Romeo and we're taking it for a drag race because that's the first thing we have to do with it for the weekly challenge. Now winning a drag race specifically can be tricky. You can't beat things on corners or anything like that. It's just straight up speed. Getting a custom tuning is often the best thing to do. Blocking your opponent, also useful. You can also adjust the difficulty. There's no requirement that it has to be on a high difficulty. So for the sake of that one, I dropped the drivers down to average difficulty. You could drop it all the way down to novice or whatever the bottom one is, just to make sure. Normally I do highly skilled because that's the requirement for the seasonal championships and such. But for anything within the weekly challenges, even any of the races you have to do within that, there's no conditions on difficulty, which is nice. Now we're coming back into the festival zone because the next thing we have to do is get three stars on the speed zones, which I don't actually have set up to appear on my map, which is a bit of a problem, but I'm fairly sure that up here is a speed zone. I can't remember what I need to get three stars in it. We're certainly not going to in this car, but I believe we just need to get three stars accumulatively as opposed to get three stars in a speed zone we'll find out <laughs> so hopefully we'll just have to go back through one more time as so long as we did well enough to get two stars either the first time or this time and moment of truth speed was star complete there we go and now the next thing we have to do is get 50,000 points in drift zones now this is a very short drift zone I'm just hanging around in the festival so we're gonna have to go through this one at least twice as well oh, 22,000 isn't bad so we just have to spin around and go back again I'm not even sure what gear is best with this one I remember we had trouble last time getting it to slide we just had to once we got it sliding it was all right just had to use the e-brake a few times to get it to slide we need like 28,000 that should do it that should be 50,000 total, I believe. Four Leaf Clover complete. Now, the reason we were hanging around the festival is because the next seasonal championship that this car qualifies for starts off with a circuit around the festival. We're up against a rather motley assortment. I think it was just A800 European cars, which unfortunately leaves it very open to interpretation. So I'm not a huge fan of my car choice with this one, to be blatantly honest. We'll see how we go catching up to the front runners here. We are back with highly skilled AI again, because that's the requirement for getting all of the rewards, including the championship points. It is three laps. The laps are fairly long. It looks short on the map at first, but that's because it winds around and goes over itself. Well, under itself in this case. It almost held our combo for an entire lap. That corner, for some reason, everyone goes quite wide on, and it allows us to catch up a little bit. I'll take whatever I can get. Try and take some tight lines through here. It's got a very wide brake light through the back. Car looked like a Cylon. Well, we managed to slip past anyway. See if we can hold it together. And now it comes down to our usual goal of just trying to improve our lap times. Well, that didn't work too well, did it? <laughs> now we've got to catch them again. Mm, I don't like you, Audi. I don't like you at all. He's an all-wheel driver, I'm fairly sure, which means he's got a bit of better acceleration out of the corners, probably. Theoretically, I should be having to worry about skidding and getting a lot of oversteer being rear-wheel drive, but uh, honestly, this has so much grip that it's actually difficult to make a sharp turn sometimes. <laughs> I'm also just not getting my braking at the right place. I should be braking there, turning through, and then pushing through the corner. And that's why that runoff is there. There we go. That was much better. 
it really helps if you think your way through the corner sometimes. <laughs> And one final corner at the end here. We should be able to cut it. We turn in around here. Oop. Okay. <laughs> we actually skidded a bit wide there. I'm trying to be too clever. <laughs> and conveniently, from where that one finishes, we hang a left and on to the next race. I do love it when they set things up such that one race leads on quite nicely from the other. Not sure where this one ends up in relation to the third race of the championship. It's also a bit of awkward light in this sort of condition, so we'll go bonnet view instead of behind the wheel. Just so we don't get any of the windshield glare. We're all charging into town. Break before we end up in the middle of someone's restaurant display. And we're in the hot season, I can't remember how much water is in the reservoir, but we're racing along besides it. It's really awkward racing towards the rising sun. <laughs> Trying to concentrate on the brake lights, we've got this really bright orb just hanging in behind. Yep, the lake is pretty dry. <laughs> took the Alpha to the Reservoir, but the Reservoir was dry. Bye bye Miss Mexican Pie or something. I mean, we did establish with the PR challenges last week that this is not the greatest of cars in terms of tuning and ability. Uh, the Audi that we chose was much better at doing the big jumps. Not all A-classes are created equally, especially when you're up against BMWs and Audis, probably some Mercedes as well. We've got a couple of corners to try and catch up. Ooh, it's going to be close. But otherwise, this might be the race that we have to take third. No, we managed to sneak in front because they break too much. Perfect. Well, that race didn't finish quite as close to the next one as the last, but that's a bit of an unfair comparison. As it is, it's not too far away, about a kilometre of a drive to get to the next race, so, you know, it doesn't really feel worth the fast travelling, even if it is free. I think that last race kind of illustrates what I like about the requirements for these seasonal championships. The fact that you need to win against highly skilled opponents. You know, that's not the highest ranked, but it's certainly not the lowest. But it gives a good balance. You've got to be pretty good, but you do still get a little bit of freedom in your car choice. Like sometimes you will be trying something, especially in the cross-country modes, that just does not work. And you will never be able, or you will struggle, to actually win against other cars that your opponents are using. But for a lot of the cases, once you've tuned it, as so long as you tune it reasonably well or use a, a decently rated custom tune that you can apply yourself, then most cars will be competitive enough that you can still win with them. And that's nice. It doesn't feel that you must take like best in class. Once you start to get up to the higher driver AI ranks, like the trial against the unbeatable AI, for those, it really pays to go and find some guides online as to what the best cars are for that class that's required, for the category that's required. And a lot of the time people will have custom tunes and stuff, especially specifically for those trial events. You'll be able to find guides on Reddit or YouTube that will often have the tuning codes so you can immediately find them and apply them and sometimes it takes what was a struggle into an absolute breeze <laughs> I've had a lot of luck with those before it was more of a concern in Horizon 4 it must be said I feel that the the trial is a little bit better balanced in 5 
but drawing on the expertise of other people who play the game a lot more, always a good idea. <laughs> But for a highly skilled level, you don't have to do that. I didn't do that with this. I made it work myself, somehow, and we got the win. So we're still in the alpha, but we have made a few changes. The requirement for this race was Super Saloon, which we do know that this is, but S1 instead of A class. So I just had to make a few performance upgrades. I hadn't taken any engine upgrades in my previous uh, uh, tuning of this car it was all in the drivetrain and the handling so had plenty of overhead to make some improvements haven't gone crazy just about 850 range this is a very confusing track uh, problem is with doing that sort of upgrade against what was a custom tune is all my gear ratios are now probably completely wrong because <laughs> I haven't redone them uh, we'll see how we go <laughs> It might not matter too much on this track because there's not too much ability for us to go top speed, but our acceleration is going to be affected. This, oh, this corner is strange, but I think taking it tighter than they did is probably the right strategy. Then we can go much wider there. It's a very wide road, so we'll try and use all of it, basically. It's an interesting track, that's for sure. Bit of a street circuit. I kind of like the minimalist approach. <laughs> Especially when it lets me go nice and wide on a corner like that. Um, instead of having all the grandstands and stuff, even though it is a road race, not a street race, they don't have lots of grandstands and barriers and things like that. They've kept it pretty open. Now, we're not turning here, are we? No, we're, we're turning here instead. We could take that corner much better. So the AI are taking a fairly narrow route, but we have the ability to go much wider if we need to, to get a, a better line through some of the corners and accelerate for a bit longer on the runoff. And yeah, there's the start-finish line, no big uh, banner or anything. <laughs> oh, way too wide on that one. There's another corner after this one, so you shouldn't go too wide on that. Never mind, we're staying in lead for now. Not quite sure what the environment around here is meant to be like. It's all the concrete. Are they meant to be icebergs or something? Then you got big satellite dishes for some reason. Ooh, yeah, that's the problem. Is I'm going wider to try and cut across, but that means that I'm cutting right past where the AI is trying to drive, and I'm not ahead enough to avoid them hitting me. Just take this nice and slow to this point. Now we accelerate and we go wide. So then we can hopefully dive in here and go in on this inner piece of road here. Ah, too far. I was hoping to have a bit of a runoff, but not hit the wall. Never mind. Means we'll take that one a bit tighter. It feels like we're racing through just a Hollywood set, to be honest. Is this like Speed 2? <laughs> it's like the city where that's set or something? Okay, we don't accelerate on the grass very well. That's the downside to doing that wide strategy on that corner. I like how they've interwoven the race in most places, but I really don't like the 180 degree hairpin bend. <laughs> I just am not good at navigating that sort of corner. Skill issue, I know. Well, we've managed to build up a decent lead, somehow, amongst all of that, and across the line. And somewhat conveniently, that takes us to halfway through the season, so we have our SRT Durango. And up next, we're going to try and work on some combo value between a few of them. So we've got this treasure hunt, right? Test RS. This is focus your mind on some upgrades at the track. And when you check out, there'll be treasure on your map. So that means we're going to the test track and we need a Ford Focus. 
So the test track is a weird place. Basically it removes all of the events and traffic and a lot of other stuff off the map and allows you to just kind of free roam it as just yourself in a car of your choice and you can try out any upgrades you like freely without purchasing them until you leave the test track. Once you leave you get the option to check out and buy and fit all of your items. but. Otherwise it just acts as a creative mode, just a sandbox with any car that you've got. So the clue said that we had to do some upgrades and when we check out, then we'll get the treasure clue. We might not actually even need to make any upgrades, quite frankly. I'm not sure what it's actually checking against, but we may as well. I've got four of these Focus, uh, 2017 Focus RSs. One of them's already kitted out to S1 class, uh, up to 899. We're not going to go that crazy. Uh, let's check out some tires. So bumping up to semi slicks immediately takes us up to 727. That's a good start. Drivetrain, I always like to upgrade as well. Better brakes is always nice. Suspension can make quite a difference even without it bumping your rating all that much. And maybe a few engine upgrades. Uh, I always like to do intake. It's not a huge jump. Exhaust as well. That bumps things a little bit more. And I like to do valves because they tend to increase your acceleration quite nicely. So now we go back to driving. We can take it for a test drive. We can tune it as much as we like as well. But I believe the key point here is we just want to check out. Which means basically just going exit. Quit event, purchase upgrades and return to free roam. Treasure challenge complete. Press to view. And it leads us over towards the end of the reservoir and you think well there's just a couple of straight roads where could the treasure chest possibly be it's probably over by the temple <laughs> there is something that's normally sunken and i'm gonna guess it's over here or not we've had a drive around and i think we might have just been debated <laughs> well if it's not there is it over here? No. Is it up by the houses? Yes, it's right there. Okay. Oh, I think I've had this one before, actually. Yeah, just down the driveway. Well, now that we've finished ruining someone's front yard, <laughs> time for us to go and do the next thing we're wanting to coordinate with in the hot hatch. So we probably should have just kitted this out for rallying after all, because we have this daily challenge that's to get three stars at speed traps. The nearest one is up here, but it's off-road. And we need to get, like, 150? Oh, okay, I don't think that's going to be a problem, actually. Never mind. <laughs> that works. It helps when you get the run up down the hill. Now, for our next trick, we're in this riot of colour. We're, I mean the event actually said solo only, but we do have an opponent, and it's like Neon Knights has just exploded above the streets of Guanajuato. So we've got to do two laps in this, let's just get you out of the way. With this very convoluted track that I don't think is quite a normal one, I think they've taken some liberties with one of the existing ones. Not only with the decor. There is also a daily challenge of getting five... Oh, we have to come back this way? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> but you need to get five speed skills in Guanajuato. I was kind of hoping to do that in this race, but I don't think there's anywhere that we can actually get up enough speed for a speed skill. This is a very confusing map. Well, our AI just crashed, so that's fine. <laughs> We've got a little bit of breathing room. That's handy. What is going on up here? Okay, we go up and let's just handbrake it and go down. We'll just pretend this is a bit of a rally. Again, we've got a little bit of a buffer because I think they're still stuck. No, they're back racing again. We'll try not to end up like them. Yes, we might not get the combo that I wanted in terms of the speed skills plus this race, but that's alright. It needed to be a super hot hatch, and we've been able to combine the Focus RS 
with a super hot, hot hatch, daily challenge, and event lab. Oh, this is very confusing through here. I do like the lights. I'll give them that. The decor, very nice. The track layout, ooh, it's a bit exhausting. <laughs> it's interesting. I'll, I'll give them that. It is very interesting. And that's just the first lap, by the way. <laughs> it looked like we were crossing the finish line, but we were going under it. Now we're on lap two. All right. That's just fun doing that. I think they could have made the tunnels more colourful, to be honest. Alright, final hairpin bend. Spin it around, get a bit of burnout going. And up to the neon finish line. That was interesting. Yeah, we'll go with interesting. 420. Nice. Swapping out the focus now for something a little bit smaller and also a little bit slower, unfortunately. Swapped into a mini because we need B rating hot hatches for the series of street races. And it was this or our trusty Audi that we had used in a previous episode, but that has off road tyres currently with its tuning. And I kind of want to leave it that way as more of a rally. Whereas the Mini, racing through the streets of town, honestly feels more appropriate. <laughs> we're, we're doing a spin-off of the Italian job. <laughs> but it's a pretty nimble car. It's not the fastest, so we will get caught up with on these straights. That's fine. That does tend to happen. But then when it comes to the sharp bends, we should do alright. I mean, if I was driving properly. <laughs> the car is doing fine. The driver could do with paying a bit more attention to things. Lovely views along this race, must be said. Very nice countryside. That is where Horizon 5 does score some bonus points over Horizon 4. On the one hand, the seasons in 4, I feel, are much better. They're much more diverse. It's a very more obvious change when you go into winter. And there's snow everywhere, for example. But probably due to limitations of the hardware of the time or the engine, you don't get many wide open views from the top of Arthur's seat that's basically it I guess <laughs> and some of the other promontories but generally you're in kind of rolling hills or forest areas so you don't get the sweeping vistas that you do whereas here you can see all the way to the volcano for most of the map and when you're up on the hill you can see down to the coast and it just feels a lot more open Oh, that was the wrong line to take through there entirely. That was terrible. Now everyone's catching up to us again. That was 100% my fault, and we don't have much room for overtaking them again. We could rewind, but eh. I'm fine with reaping the consequences of my actions in this case. We'll see how we go around here. Cut in here. Can overtake one of them at least. We might even be able to do both if we don't get stuck behind them. There we go. So much for not having top speed, huh? And from one city-based map to the next, now we have the tunnel run. So we'll be diving back into the catacombs. Not quite as much neon around as in that other lap we were doing. <laughs> More's the pity. It's just always chaos descending into that first tunnel when you're still amongst the pack of vehicles. There's this one guy ahead of me who is a little bit harder to overhaul than the rest have been. 
I was amused to see that the car that came second in the last race was a Ford Focus. Just a different model than the one I had been using. <laughs> well, there was a speed skill just before I pushed my opponent into a wall. Oh, another tight hairpin bend. We were talking earlier about how I'm not a fan of those. <laughs> At least we got some wreckage skill out of it. We didn't have to worry about crashing into a fountain. Speaking of crashing into things... <laughs> Throwing shade, I love that one. Any umbrella that you break, you get throwing shade and feet of clay whenever you break one of the plant pots. Not sure what that's meant to be a pun of. And on the home straight now, just got to worry about traffic coming the other way. But we've been pretty fortunate with where the traffic has appeared and that one just turned off before we even got to him. Fantastic. Now before we finish the final race of the championship, we're going to take a little bit of a break from the street racing and do some of the PR challenges that also require a B-class hot hatch. So a nice little tie-in there. I can't remember how fast we have to go through this. I think I only need to get about 144 or something, so we should be good. Finish that one. And somewhat conveniently, the next speed zone is just at the end of the same road across the main road and straight into it now let's see if we can hold it together through these twisty corner sections how much can we cut the corners oh lots okay <laughs> well that makes it a lot easier i'm not sure what we have to beat we are going to struggle because we don't have the off-road tires this is where the audi would definitely have been better this is all-wheel drive but I'm not sure that's enough. Well, it's gold, so that should be enough. And for our next trick in the same area as we were just doing the speed zones, we have a trailblazer, which is honestly my least favorite of the game modes ever. <laughs> you have to just charge across country, worry about hitting trees. Thankfully, the uh, suspense of realism comes into before here where we are able to just charge across the country at 200 k's an hour in a b-class mini <laughs> we want to rejoin the road up here though i look dearly because there is a ravine that we want to cross on the bridge if we can otherwise you run the risk of kind of going down and bouncing awkwardly up the other side and you can lose a lot of time by doing that but then we can just basically just do a straight run up the country road and through the finish flares and thankfully that was fast enough. You do earn an awful lot of skill points doing a trailblazer, I will give it that. But we do now want to head back to Guanajuato. And we are back under the cover of darkness once again after our daytime distractions of our PR challenges for the final street race of the series and indeed of the season this track always bugs me a little bit because we come up this hill here uh, take a sharp corner off the road go down and around our castle and then have to come back up again and cross over the road do another little diversion so i can't we really just have gone straight <laughs> uh, where's the fun in that i suppose this is a track where the Mini is probably not going to shine as much. It's definitely much better suited for the tight corners of the street racing that we were doing. Hot hatches, not generally the cars I go to for racing, it must be said. <laughs> You've got a game full of supercars and super saloons. So hot hatches, not high on the priority list. Right, now we're back into town. But we just have this brief flirtation with uh, city street racing. A few tight bends that we can hopefully make up some time in. Cut some corners. Almost get pushed into a wall. Push someone else into a wall. Good times. 
Once again, we're in the situation that so long as we come at least third, maybe even fourth, depending on how other people placed, we should be fine for the championship. But I always prefer to win. <laughs> Don't really want to just leave it to that chance. Tight bend up here, gotta hope for no traffic in an awkward place. 30% of the track to go. But there's not really much to do in it. It's uh, just kind of winding around this hillside. So there's a little bit of opportunity for overtaking here, it seems. I honestly didn't think there would be, but it seems that they are giving me opportunities, so that's nice. They're taking some pretty wide lines through here. We're going to cut the corner. And get instantly penalised because we hit the wreckage, which slowed us down horribly. <laughs> We were going to look so cool if we managed to skate through there and not hit the fence <laughs> and just kind of cut between the rock wall and the uh, traffic, but we didn't, but that's okay. I could rewind it and go for the swag. We'll just take the win of the championship. And with that, we are done for the season. We've got our BMW M3 and at the same time, we're done with the entire series, rounding out an exact 160 points for the Lucid Air. Not a car I've heard of before. We were very frugal this time around. We just hit the exact amount that we needed and I never got around to going back and finishing off any of the other skills for the bonus Forzathon points and I didn't really need the other cars that were up for grabs. So we say goodbye to the somewhat lukewarm high performance dailies and coming soon, Hidden Horizons with his Stadium Maze. That sounds like fun. A new game mode, which I believe is the hide and seek that they've already added to the game, which is another multiplayer thing that I really don't particularly care about. But new cars. New cars is always good. New clothing I don't really care about. But all that will be starting next week. For now, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then.